Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Before we get into all the Fred Hoiberg stuff, I want to tell you that I'm coaching a team in the basketball tournament in July. It's a five-on-five, single elimination, winner-take-all for a million-dollar tournament. And you'll be able to follow us as I'll be filming everything from the practices to the huddles to the halftime to the games. We still need some more votes. We're number one in the West, but I want to be number one in the country. So head on over there and give us a vote. And if we win, you win, because the, the guy who gets the most votes for us will also win a ton of money. So now let's talk about Fred Hoiberg. I think by now we all know why Coach Tom Thibodeau was fired from the Bulls. Basically, he overplayed his players, and his offense was a bit unimaginative. So I asked Arturo Galetti, our friend with the numbers, to find out just how badly he did overplay his team this year because it was such a big deal between him and the front office. And we did see some really compelling numbers. Now, even though he's up there in the top, he's not all the way in the top there. There were other teams that played their top 10 and their top 6 even more than Coach John Thibodeau. And what's really interesting is that the one team above them is the Cleveland Cavaliers. And look how far they got overplaying their players. So I'm not saying it was a good thing. For sure, we saw a lot of injuries to Butler and to Rose and to Noah and to Powell, most likely because they were playing too many minutes. And that's how Thibodeau rolls. And that's not how the front office wanted to roll. So now we got to find out if Coach Fred Hoiberg will follow the guidelines of playing time. And it seems like I would be shocked if they didn't give guys like Tony Snell and McDermott more run and more opportunities. They're certainly going to need a little bit more shooting than they have right now, especially if they don't bring back Mike Dunleavy. I'm kind of assuming they will, but who knows after they sign Butler if that's going to happen. That said, I went through a lot of Fred Hoiberg stuff that he runs at Iowa State, and it's pretty exciting because the dribble pitch is a real big part of his offense. And I love that because it's really a moving pick and roll, basically, very hard to stop. And when you execute it correctly, like we've seen the Spurs do, it is almost impossible to guard. And before I forget, our friend Zach Boisvert was instrumental in helping me find clips and understanding Coach Hoiberg's philosophy. If you want to see more on Coach Hoiberg, visit Zach's website by clicking on the screen or in the description below. Without a question, pickandpop.net is a vital resource for any coach, as is his Twitter account. So follow him there, too. One of the basic sets Coach Hoiberg uses is called Quick, and it's a nice base system to have with guys like Rose and Butler who can attack off some quick initial dribble pitch action and it'd be easy to see Miritich being the third player involved in this to generate space and open up opportunities early in the shot clock. The weave action is unique since it happens towards the wing, and you can see how Noah can also be involved in this to great results. And I really like how you can break back into an elbow screen for a good shooter like Dunleavy or perhaps Butler. Through is very similar to the Spurs' motion weak, Triggered when the point guard enters the ball to the wing, then shallow cuts to the weak side wing. They then run flex action for either the post up or a shot out top. Here's an example of through where they clear the left side so the point guard can either isolate or cut back door. Think Derrick Rose doing damage in this action. Here's another option off of through that could really help Derrick Rose attack after getting the ball moving first. And then break into the pick and roll action that he's good at. They also have a wrinkle where Rose can curl around a pin down, then receive a dribble pitch so he can turn the corner. This would be perfect for him. And this option off through is interesting because the guard bringing it up, instead of shallow cutting to the wing, goes to the weak side low post. Think Jimmy Butler if he develops his post game. This is something he could abuse weaker guards with. And Hoiberg gets me excited with this doozy. Watch the weak side corner screen in the baseline then sprint through the elevator doors for an open shot in a unique spot on the floor, the garden spot. When they run through with the UCLA cut, the screener pops out for a ball screen, similar to the Spurs zipper fist action, and this would easily open up three-point shots as the roll man sinks to the rim. And they add another wrinkle by adding a two-guard front to through, which completely opens up the basket area for a good low post for someone like Powell. The spacing is optimal to allow the post, and if help comes, an easy find for an open three. Here's a set Taylor made for Joe Keep Noah's excellent passing. They do a nice split in front of the high post, and there are a myriad of options off of this. 
Joe Keane could easily fake the handoff at the dribble pitch or find shooters as well. We didn't see a ton of low post actions from Hoiberg's sets, but here's a good one where they pin down and enter into the post. Certainly Iowa State was more concerned with generating outside shots from his position, but Powell could also do damage with shooters getting good screening action all around him, leading to no help for his defender. I really like Spin Rip since it reminds me of the Warriors weave they run for Klay Thompson. However, instead of it ending in a ball screen, the Cyclones hit the pinch post. Problem is, this back screen action is gorgeous, but is executed too early. The pinch post should be throwing this for lobs to the rim, so I suspect Hoiberg will adjust this accordingly. That said, you can see how this would open up space for Paul Gasol if he were back screening out of this as well. Of course, there is plenty of room for Derrick Rose in the playbook as they have AI cuts, something I'm not really into since it gives the defense a chance for a pick six in the flat pass and the guard is catching it while moving straight towards the sideline. But it does a nice job to clear out that side of the court and give Rose a chance to do his thing. Another set that caught my eye is this horns looking set where they cross the corners and get a back screen for the weak side high post. The Warriors got this a few times against the Grizzlies and it just shows a high level of coaching and execution when a team can get this. This looks a bit like the Spurs loop, giving the guard three straight screens across the baseline. I even like the fake ball screen, turn around and set the elbow screen. Of course, no offense breakdown for me would be complete without some horns, and Coach Hoiberg certainly has that in his back pocket. Aside from the typical action we're used to seeing, he's got some really cool stuff too, like this double cross screen for a post up on the right side. And this double stagger for the left side corner sets up a dribble pitch and allows the attacker to turn the corner strong. So there you have it sports fans, some pretty encouraging signs on the offense at least because we did know that Thibodeau didn't run it very excitingly and they had trouble scoring down the stretch. Uh, in those playoff games. So I think we'll see a lot of that. That said, Hoiberg has a huge playbook with tons of plays and there's no way he'll be able to port all those over. So he's going to have to pick and choose and figure out what works best and he won't have too much time because the pressure will be on for him to win right away. So we'll have to find out how the Bulls shape up the rest of their offseason. But I got to tell you, I don't know if I really see Derrick Rose fitting in this kind of an offense that well. I know we saw Tony Parker finally adjust to the Spurs system, but it took a guy like Greg Popovich riding him for several years until he finally got it. So I don't know if Rose is there, and I don't see Powell dribble pitching across the top and rolling off a double uh, weak side screen for a low post. I think he just wants to run down, set a pin down, turn around and get the ball. And I don't know if that's going to work as well in this system. So I don't know. I'm crazy. I almost say maybe they can get something for Powell because he just made second team all NBA or whatever he made. And you know what? Maybe maybe they maybe they trade Derrick Rose. I mean, I don't think that Gar Foreman and, and John Paxson are, are, are any less popular for doing that after doing what they did to Coach Thibodeau. So I don't know. I feel like maybe with even Derrick Rose, perhaps this is as much of a value they're ever going to have for him. So it'd be real interesting to see. But I mean, I know it's crazy, but uh, I'd almost say they might be able to get a lot more value back for him now than they would later on when he maybe breaks down even more. Well, thanks for joining us, sports fans. Lots coming up for this NBA Finals. I can't wait. And don't forget, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You in?